Under partly cloudy skies with a gusty northwest wind and a temperature in the low 40s, Joe Biden was sworn in as president today at noon in downtown Washington, D.C. The weather actually fairly typical for modern inauguration days. Now, the average high on Inauguration Day in our nation's capital is 43, the average noon temperature 37. The inauguration always on January 20th, except when that falls on a Sunday, it's moved to the 21st. Now, historically, there's a one in six chance of some form of precipitation during the ceremony, but just a one in 20 chance of snow. Now, prior to 1937, presidential inaugurations were actually held in early March still well within winter's grip, so even then the weather was occasionally an issue. In 1841, William Henry Harrison gave the longest inaugural speech on record almost two hours on a cool windy day without a hat or coat. He died a month later from a cold that turned into pneumonia, though his illness was probably not directly linked to the inauguration. In 1889, his grandson Benjamin Harrison, our 23rd president, took the oath in a downpour under an umbrella on a chilly 40-degree day. The snowiest inauguration was in 1909 for William Taft when the weather forced the swearing-in ceremony indoors. 9.8 inches of snow brought much of Washington to a standstill and 6,000 workers used 500 wagons to clear the parade route. Taft joked that he always knew it would be a, quote, cold day in hell, unquote, when he got to be president. The first January inauguration was in 1937 for FDR's second term, and it turned out to be the rainiest January 20th on record in Washington with nearly two inches. Rain came down hard between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., and the temperature at noon was just 33. Undeterred, Roosevelt watched the inaugural parade for 90 minutes from an exposed viewing stand. Snow and cold was the issue in 1961 for John F. Kennedy's inauguration. Eight inches fell the day before, leaving thousands of cars marooned or abandoned around the city. Skies cleared for the swearing in, but the temperature was just 22 at noon, with a wind chill well below zero. As for temperature extremes, the warmest January inauguration was in 1981, when Ronald Reagan enjoyed the mid-50s as he was sworn in for his first term. Ironically, the coldest January inauguration was for Reagan's second term four years later. The temperature at noon was just seven with wind chills in the minus teens. The weather was so harsh that the parade was canceled and the swearing in was moved indoors. Washington, D.C. is only a short drive from much of Pennsylvania, but weather-wise, it's often very different. As an example, nearly all of the Commonwealth has had at least one snow this winter that required shoveling, but only a trace of snow has fallen so far in downtown Washington. Stay tuned. Our extended forecast is next.